Hey, welcome to Calvary. My name is Benjamin, and I'd like to welcome you to our beautiful candlelight Christmas service. Tonight, we'll be starting off with some classic Christmas worship and some videos, followed by the lighting of the Advent candles and an encouraging message from Pastor Barry. Towards the end of the service, we'll be lighting candles together, so make sure you pick yours up on your way in. We'll also be having free apple cider and a time to connect after the service in the foyer. From everyone here on staff and volunteering at Calvary, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. My feet are so cold. The fresh gift of snow on the ground, the chill of the wind whistling through these trenches that we have built, that we dug, just chills me to the bone. It's been months now. How I long to be home again. I miss my girlfriend. It's probably been a month since her last letter. I miss my mom's cooking. Oh, to be warm again and feel the sleep in the comfort of my own bed. But will tomorrow be my last? My last day? As we rush out onto the battlefield, this no man land, no man's land between us and the Germans, I don't know. And it's Christmas Eve. I wonder if the fire is roaring at home with all the decorations that mom usually puts up. I can smell the fresh baking as it comes out of the oven. I can hear, I can hear grandpa playing on his old guitar, those Christmas carols, even if no one seems to be listening or singing along with him. Oh, I just ache inside. My stomach is churning. No one should have to spend Christmas Eve like this. And here we sit, in the silence of the moment. Dusk has moved to darkness. Tonight, our lamps are lit, and no one is saying a word. Jenkins, I'm clean. Night. My name is Jim. My name is Otto. Pleased to meet you, Otto. Freut mich. Rose, she's called. Um, it's schön. Um, it's schön.
Danke. Happy Christmas. Frohe Weihnachten. You know, I can't imagine what those couple days would have been like. You know, going from war on one day, simply waiting for the next wave to be brutally slaughtered, to taking a day off to celebrate peace, peace, and then the next day going back to killing the very men that you just played soccer with. Peace for one day in the midst of war, but peace nonetheless. Would you say that you were looking for peace? Maybe some of us, even if it's peace for a day, that would be better than what you're currently experiencing. In fact, maybe you would say, peace not just for a day, please, but as an enduring experience inside. Well, would you say that we live in a world that longs for peace? I think of the war between Russia and Ukraine. I haven't known people personally, but I have friends who have had friends and family killed. Do you think they're looking for peace in the midst of war? Do you notice all the political upheaval around the world? Natural disasters, terror attacks. What about China's continued military exercises in the South China Sea or North Korea's launching of new ballistic missiles? Thousands of hearts around the world are dark with menace and murder. Where's the peace? How many of us are looking for peace, perhaps in the midst of uncertainty? What would be yours? Is it finances? With interest rates rising? Maybe you're concerned about the renewal of your mortgage. Because of increased costs of utilities and repairs and borrowing costs, perhaps you're concerned about your rents going up. And with the cost of groceries, the price of gas as it's been over this last year, maybe you're just wondering how to feed your family or trying to keep a roof over your head. Great uncertainty. What about peace in the midst of fear? You know, though it feels like certain parts of our world have come to some normalcy, when I talk with people, there is like this continual undercurrent of fear in what lies before us. We're in the midst of flu season. How many people, how will people respond? How will the government and institutions and businesses, our friends and our family, how will they react to this? There continues to be high levels of fear in some people regarding these things. I I consider the number of deaths that many of us have had to face in family and friends. And fear of more sickness and more disease can only drive our, our uneasiness deeper. How many of us are experiencing peace in the midst of grief? You know, maybe you're looking for peace in the midst of anxiety. What keeps you up at night? What are the, those things racing through your mind that make you feel overwhelmed? You know, I woke up at before, just before 4 a.m. the other morning, and I find my, my mind beginning to race. Costs of borrowing and construction rising, uh, the timing of the real estate market, some significant bus- business decision staring me in the face. I was looking for some peace in the midst of anxiety. Many throughout the centuries have cried out, where's the peace? You know, perhaps for others of us, It's peace in the midst of conflict, family conflict. I think of this meme. Does anyone else see the irony in singing about peace on earth at a time when families get together? (laughs) What we're experiencing today, today, this isn't new. This search for peace in the midst has always been. It's embedded in the world's DNA. It was evident in Adam and Eve's, Eve's family, They were the first family on earth. It was evident 150 years ago. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, try saying that really fast 10 times, 
He voiced in a Christmas poem written in the mid-1860s, so this is just six months after the American Civil War. He wrote this. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. You know, so many before him and so many after would exclaim with Longfellow, where's the peace? When we're looking for peace in the midst of life but don't seem to experience it, hopelessness can set in, even despair. I don't believe there's ever been a time in recorded history when mental health struggles have been so common and so prevailing through our culture, throughout the world, than it is today. Is there any hope in finding peace? Do we think the government's going to fix this? We try to answer this unrest with new drugs to cover our heartache, or at least temporarily to fill the emptiness of our inner world. Some escape through addictive electronics or busyness just to quiet the storm inside. Still others just want to take a pill or even be assisted in their pursuit to exit this planet, an early exit. These are the only answers we seem to have doesn't appear that people are finding peace in the midst of whatever they're facing. And if we're asking, how can I find peace in the midst of life? And we're asking a really good question. As we look at the backdrop of Christmas, it's a picture of peace in the midst of chaos. Here's the scene. But we need to realize the political and the economic context of Jesus' birth. Israel is an occupied country. They have no control over their destiny. The current reigning evil king goes on a rampage to find and kill Jesus by searching home to home and killing all every infant boy under two years old. Can you imagine? This is the world that Jesus is born into. There was insurmountable problems. Poverty, great uncertainty, darkness, angst, fear, great desperation. But around Jesus is serenity and peace in the midst of chaos, worse than present day here in Canada. Is it possible for such peace to be present in that kind of chaos? Well, it's in Jesus. If anyone can bring peace, it's Jesus. You know, on that Christmas back in 1914, those German and English soldiers experienced moments of peace celebrating who? Jesus Christ coming to earth. This was just a taste of the peace that Jesus came to bring. When the angels proclaimed, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, they were actually affirming a prophecy given about Jesus some 600 years earlier. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Well, let's look at those titles just for a minute. He's identified as Wonderful Counselor, bringing truth in the midst of confusion and grief and pain. Mighty God, when we are powerless, when we are hopeless and defenseless, when the angels proclaimed to the, to the shepherds, they called him Savior and Messiah and Lord. Jesus is everlasting Father. He's eternal. He's not going anywhere when we need love, when we need acceptance, significance, wisdom, hope. He's going to be there. And he is Prince of Peace. He's the initiator. He's the source of peace in the midst of anxiety and worry and fear. The source that we can tap into to find peace for our relationships. Jesus comes bringing peace with him. How is it that so many people are missing it? Luke 2.14. Glory to God in the highest 
and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Peace can mean the absence of conflict. It can mean an agreement to end hostilities and further fighting. It can be a state of mutual harmony between people who are now free from violence and from civic disorder. That is the peace that we can have between us and God. And he shows us the way to end conflict between each other. But he also brings a peace that is a calm in the midst of the storm. It's a settledness in the midst of worry and anxiety. It's the emotion that we experience when we trust that God has us even when life seems unsafe and unfair. His presence alone brings a profound comfort to the restlessness that we experience inside. Peace on earth in the midst of chaos, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of hatred is what Jesus brings. You know, who else but God could create a window like that for those soldiers on Christmas Day back in 1914? You know, one day Jesus will rule The government will rest on his shoulders and he will bring lasting peace. But until that day, his peace comes not necessarily to change our circumstances, to rescue us necessarily out of the mess that we are in, but to settle us in the midst of those uncomfortable, difficult circumstances. Jesus is our hope for peace. He is the answer. And he's the source of lasting peace. But you might be asking, well, how can we experience his peace in the midst of what you're facing? Well, I just say, start with Jesus. Can you embrace who he is? Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Are you willing to trust him with your fear? Trust him in your insecurity and your inadequacy, in your loneliness. When it feels like life is falling apart or your family is coming apart at the seams or work just isn't seeming to work out very well, who do you run to in these times? Are you willing to trust God with all things? What will you do with Jesus? I want to show you something more. This is really awesome. Before Jesus ascends to heaven, after he's been raised back to life, Jesus offers a gift. John chapter 14, verse 27. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift. This one's not wrapped in paper. Of peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Let me ask you a question. Have you picked up his gift? Follower of Jesus or not today, what have you done with this gift? What have you done with the gift of Jesus, the Prince of Peace? I know lots of people who have followed Jesus Christ, but they haven't picked this gift up. They haven't sought it out. Jesus would say, don't settle for a shallow peace. The gift I'm giving you is for your mind and for your heart. It doesn't come from this world. You may be tempted to look there, but there has no ability to supply what you're looking for. So don't just stay troubled and afraid. Pursue a personal relationship with me, he says. You know what? This has been true for me. It's been a part of my story. I've walked with Jesus almost all of my life but struggled with an undercurrent of anxiety. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know what was there. Didn't even realize it was there for the longest time. And as I've sought his, his healing for my brokenness and, so, and for some of my wounding, seeking to unwrap this gift that he gives, I've experienced his peace at a whole new level I never even thought possible. It's an incredible experience. Would it be true that you need his peace in some way. My guess is that you do. Could your marriage use it? Could your family use it? I know our community could. You know, if you look in the 
in the section, in, in the comment section, there on social media, wherever you guys are, are watching, there is a prayer. And for those of us that are here in person, on your way out, on the tables, is a prayer, is a process that you can walk through so that you can discover peace with God for yourself. I encourage you to take this Christmas, take this time, and seriously consider, what are you going to do with Jesus? Now, let me ask all of us, are you passing this peace that Jesus brings onto the people around you? Or are you living in contention and an animosity? You know, in this life, we will have trouble. Jesus tells us this. We will be offended. We will be wronged. We will face uncertainty, fear. We'll face anxiety. But going the world's ways in these struggles will not result in peace, but only greater worry, only greater anxiety and, and greater fear. It may even end in addictions, broken relationships, disaster, and sometimes death. I don't want that for you. Going God's way and seeking peace is the only way, Jesus says, to discover and experience what it is that you're looking for. This is why billions of people around the world will celebrate Jesus' birth this week. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Work with me in your life, he says. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my way is easy to bear, and my burden that I give you is light. So I invite you. Will you come with us? Will you travel your journey with us here at Calvary as we together seek to experience his peace in the midst of our life? You know, we meet here every Sunday morning, 10 a.m., and various times throughout the week in small group. It is my hope that you experience peace, not just for an evening like this, not just for a day, but as a lasting experience through your relationship with Jesus Christ. Is this possible? Well, God sent Jesus, his son, for exactly that purpose. It's why we celebrate even after 2,000 years. It's why we give gifts because the greatest gift was given to those who seek God's peace. Let's pray. God, I'm so thankful. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful that you did not consider everything that you had, all the benefits and the privileges, the glory that you had in heaven as something to, to cling to and to grasp only, only for your own benefit. You decided, you gave that up to become one of us. And we are so grateful. And God, it doesn't surprise you the lack of peace that we experience in this life. And so I ask in Jesus' name for all who are looking for peace, all who are longing and needing peace inside, Holy Spirit, would you give, would you manifest your presence? And would you give us a sense of your peace now? Would you come now in these moments? Holy Spirit, would you pour God's love into our heart? And would you help us experience your love and your presence deep inside our spirit, in our heart? We celebrate you coming, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.